Am I live? I think so. I can't see myself. I don't know if you're commenting. I can't see you, but I'm here to deliver value because I love all you guys. And what I want to talk about today in here is why people give up. Now, a lot of times I've seen this so many times, time and time again. Now guys, uh, I'm doing this live because I want to be myself. I enjoy doing these type of videos and I hope that you guys get some value from it. Hopefully, you know, if you're watching now, awesome. If you're watching later, awesome. And I think this is a great way just for, um, you know, for us to kind of show you guys what we do um, in our Monday meetings with Culture Matters. And this way, you know, we can kind of include you guys who aren't able to make it to our headquarters um, in our discussions and, you know, have something where uh, you guys can go consistently once a week or twice a week. I'm going to be doing lives. Jay Duran is going to do a live as well, possibly um, later in the week. My days are Tuesdays, and I'm going to be coming at you every Tuesday from now on. I'm going to come out with you with a live, and we're going to discuss some topics, and we're going to go over um, some things of value um, and a lot of mindset, personal development. Um, I know we talk a lot about business and whatnot in our normal videos. This year, we're going to be gearing more towards the mindsets on how to change them, or at least bring yourself to awareness about them. So. Why do people give up? It's like, you have somebody, we all have this friend. Uh, I hope you don't have this friend, but I have a couple friends I like that. So, friend of mine calls me up, hey Antoine, what's up? Hey, what's up man? So, dude, I'm starting this new business venture. I am so gung-ho about it, I'm getting ready to you know, hit the ground running, I uh, have all the money for it, I put the money up, we're started, rocking and rolling. That person gets into the business or that person starts something. Doesn't have to be business, it could be anything. They start something, they're really excited in the beginning. The beginning, they're so excited, they just can't get any more excited to start what they're doing and then they get into doing it and they stop and they give up. Now, what are some reasons that people do this? It's like it doesn't even make sense, right? Like you start something, but then you give up, but you were so passionate about it and you were so gung ho, what happened? Well, I wanna walk you through, uh, what is this, five, just five quick mindset tips that you guys should keep in mind and become aware of. So the first thing, why do people give up? People dwell on their mistakes. This is something that does happen very commonly. And, you know, it's a human nature to kind of dwell on things and to kind of dwell on your mistakes in a way. Uh, because a lot of times, you know, if you want to think ancestral, um, when we didn't have the technology or the means to protect ourselves, well, when we made a mistake, that could have been a life or death mistake. So the brain automatically wants to keep dwelling and replaying that bad situation so that we can condition ourselves to stay away from that and to foresee that in the future because we've dwelled on it and we've reflected on it for so long. So when these mistakes happen and we fail, what's the first thing the brain wants to do? It wants to go and it wants to dwell on that mistake. Well, we're human guys and guess what else? We have the ability to make a decision, we have free will. Meaning, we don't have to stay stuck on dwelling on our mistakes. What we have to do is we have to change our perspective and see how can those mistakes help us. So we don't want to view them as mistakes, they're simply speed bumps. Or it's just a turn right sign. That mistake didn't stop you from going forward, just you needed to make a turn to continue going forward. So, the mistakes that we make, we want to learn from them. And we want to look at the situation, we can dwell on the mistake for a very 
minute period of time, only long enough for us to extract the lesson there. Once we have the lesson, move on, okay? If you're digging a hole and you're throwing the dirt to the right, and every time you're throwing it, it's coming back in your hole, hey, you can sit there, you can dwell on the mistake you made a little bit, but in all reality, you're gonna have to take the lesson from it, which is don't throw the, the dirt to the right. Try don't throwing the dirt forward, or try throwing the dirt to the left, or try it behind you. That would be the lesson. And then, eventually, something's gonna work where you're gonna be able to get that dirt out of the hole and it's not gonna come back into the hole. But if you dwell on it, chances are you're not gonna try anything else. So, uh, if you dwell on it for too long, I guess. So now, moving along, what is another thing that causes people to give up? A lot of people are very resistant to change. They don't like change. Now, I can understand that. And biologically speaking, humans don't like change. Why? Because we can get acclimated to our environment and we're comfortable then. And who doesn't like to be comfortable? Change causes people to become uncomfortable. Who likes to be uncomfortable? Not many people. However, when you resist change, like let's put, it, uh, put this into context. Let's say you're a new business. You're looking to get your new business out there. You're looking to let people know who you are. You're looking to build a following. Well, if you're going to put out paper ads, if you're going to mail flyers, if you're going to um, have material paper products only to distribute your information and go person to person to person to person how it was done in the 1970s, I wish you the best. However, by not moving with the times, which would be putting yourself out there on camera, on media, if you're not moving with the times, then people who are putting themselves out on media are going to surpass you in that marketplace for your business. Because, simply, more people get to see your face if you put yourself out there on media than if you were to put your face out there on a flyer and hand your flyer out on the corner all day. And not to mention, you also have the ability with the internet to have people targeted to see your face, which not so much can you really do that um, with you know flyers, etc. Obviously, if you have a CRM or something like that, you can you know do different things that are going to target uh, people you've done business with in the past, people you know. But uh, a great way to stay ahead of the curve, okay, and to not be resisting change if you're new in business or if you're even old in business. If you've been in business for you know 20, 30 years and you know you're not quite used to this whole marketing and media thing. Um, don't be scared. Take the leap, okay? Don't resist change and have some fun. So, resisting change is a big reason why people do give up. Um, nextly, people believe in their weakness. This is something that I see a lot. Um, I hear about it a lot. I can't do this because I'm not good enough at this. I can't do this because I don't know that. I can't do this because I need this. Well, if you wait to be ready, you will never be ready. Successful people don't do things when they're ready. Successful people do things when it's time to do them. So, if you believe in your weakness, then you are always going to embody that weakness the same way as if you believe and focus on your strengths. So, many people, they focus on their weakness, they want to know, okay, I'm not good at this, how do I become better at this, and how do I do what I'm good at and then compensate what I'm not good at? 
Okay. When you form the agreement that you're going to focus on and believe in your strengths, is when you will start to get forward. Why? Because when there's no I in team, right? So if you're part of a team, a corporation, an organization, a company, okay? If you're part of a team, you have a role to fill, like a football team. The quarterback isn't gonna go on the front line and block a 350 pound linebacker or, you know, uh, nose guard, okay? The quarterback, it's simply, it's not his role, it's not his position. So the quarterback knows what he's good at. He's good at throwing the ball. The running back knows what he's good at running the ball. The receiver knows what he's good at catching the ball. And the guys that I love, the gridiron guys down in front, they know what they're good at, and they're good at freaking pushing masses of body weight around. All right? And they protect the quarterback. All right? So, when you believe in your weakness, that means that you're not paying attention to your strengths. So, you need to believe in your strengths and your weaknesses. You need to find people to fill those roles that their strengths are your weaknesses. And then together you will fill, form a beautiful team that will be able to conquer many things and much more than if you were to try to do everything yourself. The chaser of two rabbits catches none, okay? Know what your strengths are, find them out, deep, dive deep into them, develop them, and make your strengths better than you could have ever even imagined. Don't even worry about your weaknesses. Focus on your strengths, develop your strengths, develop the things that you're good at, and become very focused on the things that you're good at, and you will be successful. Uh, nextly, let's move along. Okay, let's uh, cross these out here, okay? So dwelling on mistakes, resisting change, believing in their weaknesses, okay? And now, next for the last two here, these are heavy. Feel the world owes them something, and they're fearing failure more than they desire success. Okay, so you wake up in the morning, you roll out of bed, and you're already pissed off. Why? Because you gotta go to work. Why? Because your father or your mother didn't leave you tens of millions of dollars so that you didn't have to go to work, okay? The people who wake up like this in the morning, with that excuse, they feel that the world owes them something. They feel like, hey, why do I need to go and do this? Why do I need to go and do all this energy? There's so many other people on the world that are living the lap of luxury. How do they get so lucky? How do I get so unlucky? Why does my life suck? Sound familiar? Maybe. I hope it doesn't. So, when you feel like the world owes you something, it's very difficult to continue on your path of something that you're looking to achieve. Why? Because you don't really feel that you should have to work to achieve it in the first place. If you don't agree with that, that's okay. When you feel like the world owes you something, it's very easy to get discouraged. Why? Because subconsciously, someone who has the opposite mindset, which would be someone that wakes up and says, hey, I am so grateful to be alive today. I have air in my lungs, and I'm able to walk, and I'm able to maneuver, I can move, I have all my bodily function, I have all my limbs, I have my brain, I can think. Wow, I can do a lot today. I can enjoy my life today. Now, the difference between those two people when they get into difficult tasks and they're in the rut and they're really going through, you know, um, a difficult situation, well, the person that feels the world owes them something, 
they're more likely to give up because why should they even be working in the first place? They shouldn't. Their mother and father should have been a millionaire. They should have left them a trust fund. So this sucks. I'm not even going to do this anymore. I'm going to find something else that doesn't suck as much as this. And they give up. As opposed to the person who's very, very grateful for everything that they have even down to their limbs and their fingers and their, the air they breathe and the ability to blink their eyes or they can even see out of their eyes. For that person, when they wake up in the morning and they take that first step out of bed and they're excited to start their day simply because they're alive. Well, when they get in that tough situation, they're not thinking, oh, poor me. They're thinking, oh man, I am so lucky that I get to do this right now. That I get the ability and an opportunity to go and attack this situation with a full head of, of thoughts and, and, and ideas and a heart that is just motivated because you know what? Today I'm living my life. And if I have to do something that's a little bit difficult today, awesome. Why? Because I'm going to learn something. So the next time I have to do that difficult thing or something similar to it, I will have already done it and I'll be faster next time. I'll be even better next time. And they get excited about that. Why? Simply because they're grateful for having the opportunity to do anything. Just to live their life. So guys, that's a big one for me. And lastly, when you fear failure more than you desire success, okay, that's something. I've heard this quote today from a friend of mine, we were filming before this. Andrew, Andrew, if you're watching, you're awesome, man. I can't wait to release these videos with you. So he told me, he goes, you know, from all the friends that I have that are in marketing space, that are top guys in the marketing industry, he goes, they'll tell you, nine out of every 10 ads fail. And it's all about finding that one ad that does well and that's what they hinge their business on. A whole business can fail 90% of the time and it just takes that 10% of the time to find a winner. And they created a business out of that. So nine out of 10 marketing ads fail. So if you fail, if you fear failure more than you desire success, Number one, you're definitely not going to be an internet marketer. That's for sure. But number two, you're not going to be able to fail enough times in order to succeed. So guys, you know, we all seen that, that, you know, picture online and whatnot. You see what success, what we think it's like a straight line, what success is actually like, and it's a big scribble. And that's very true. So friends, when you fail at something, don't be upset that you failed. Be excited that you failed. Why? Because that's one step closer that you're going to get to succeed. And if you have that mentality in everything that you do, and you don't dwell on your mistakes, you don't resist the changes that are coming, you believe in your strengths, you know what you're good at. You don't feel like the world owes you something and you're grateful when you wake up and you're happy to have a body and a mind that you can use, that you can better and you can grow and you can continue to develop and you don't fear failure more than you want your success. If you can take these five traits and turn them on your side, then friends, you will be a better human being for it. So, right now, I'm hoping my phone didn't turn off and I'm hoping that everyone got great value from this video because I care about you guys. I want you guys to live the best, most successful life from within. Your inner world creates your outer world. Andrew told me that quote tonight. And that was something that will stick with me for the rest of my life. Your inner world will create your outer world.
So guys, I'll leave you with this. If you don't feel mindset, it's very important. There are 100,000 trillion neuron connections in your brain that transmit information inside your brain. There are only 10 million external influences that can be received by your brain. Meaning that there is a significantly less amount of external input coming into your brain than the connections of input in your brain. So that is why your mindset dictates the lens or the filter that the exterior world is perceived. So your reality hinges mostly on your mindset, neuro, neuro, law, neurologically speaking, because there's more neurological connections in your mind than out in the external world that can be used as input information for your mind. So it matters what you think, it matters what you tell yourself, it matters how you perceive things in order to become successful. All right, friends, so I will wrap it up here. You're back with us once again. Culture matters. And I hope you guys got some great value from this, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. And this is where I would cut it, but we're live. So you see me walk up screen. Bye.